In this video, can the ChatGPT AI bot write some ESP32 CAM code better than I can? In my last video I showed how to program the ESP32 CAM module to take a series of still images and then save them onto a micro SD card. I then used these images to make a crude time-lapse movie. Now let's see if ChatGPT can write some code to get the ESP32 CAM module to do the same. So to get ChatGPT to write code, you first need to write it a brief description. Then you just enter the spec into the requirements text box and wait for it to write the code. Unlike when I write code, it does it in a very linear fashion. It basically starts at the top and works its way down. If I was writing code, I would first add the code for initializing the camera, then add the code to handle the SD card, and so on. I must admit to be quite impressed with how it comes up with the code. It definitely doesn't appear to simply plagiarize existing code copied from other web pages. I also ran the same procedure three times and each time I received different code. Magic, huh? It reminded me of the old days of writing content for the web. You could simply use article spinners to populate your content farms with apparently unique content, with unique in inverted commas. So does this code work? Let's fire up the Arduino IDE and take a look at it. So here is ChatGPT's first attempt at making time-lapse photography code for the ESP32 CAM module. So let's have a quick look at it. So the first thing to notice is that it has deviated from the specification quite a bit. This is not uncommon if you are a project manager and you're getting developers to write code. So you'll notice that it's included Wi-Fi.h and nowhere in my specification up here did I say that it needs to connect to the Wi-Fi. You don't even need to connect to the Wi-Fi if you are using just the camera module. Some things are quite good. I like that it has put a comment in here for the interval, so it's probably thinking that it has to take photos every few seconds. The duration I'm not too sure about. I don't really think we have to have that. In the setup, it appears to have everything needed to use the actual camera module. It set the frame size, set the output to JPEGs. For some reason, it's getting the time. Uh, I guess, was that duration as a top? Okay, this code is somewhat complex. There are much easier ways to do this. Yeah, not too sure what it's doing, but the actual photo taking code looks okay. Saving is kind of interesting, it's actually using the SPI FFS library. That's not one I actually used when I was doing my own code. If you look closely, well you probably don't have to look very closely, there is a fundamental problem here and that is saving all of the photos with the same file name. So clearly this can't be used for time-lapse photography because all the file names will be the same so there would only ever be one file. So this is a big fail. Also, I believe it's missing the end curly bracket of the loop here. Pretty sure that we need one down here. In fact, I think we're missing two. Yeah, so for some reason it gave up at the end and forgot to put in another curly bracket. Uh, that's an easy newbie mistake, particularly when you're writing C or C sharp. So does this code actually compile? Let's go to sketch and then verify. So we do have some errors and the biggest error of course is for some reason the makers of the new Arduino IDE have used red text on black which is impossible to read. Um, we have many issues here. Uh, these constants aren't found so it just seems to have made them up. Probably we need to include a specific library. So I guess the take home message is that this was a big fail. There are lots of errors at the top here, but scrolling down there are multiple errors. Uh, this code is junk really. They should have used just an infinite number of monkeys really. They might have come up with better code than this. So this is ChatGPT's second attempt at writing the time lapse code. As I said earlier, it's kind of interesting that every time you run the application, you get some different code returned. So this time, the code to initialize the SSID and the password are actually defined at the top of the code. As I said before, we don't actually need it to connect to the Wi-Fi, so I don't know why it's actually put this code in. 
So this time it hasn't used constants for the pin numbers, it's actually put in magic numbers. Again it has changed the pixel format to JPEG and the frame size can be adjusted here. One good thing this time, it doesn't appear to have got confused about the curly brackets, it seems to have put them in. So I'm just wondering if ChatGPT's artificial intelligence makes better code every time you run the same procedure. Another good thing, this time it has realised that the images have to be named uniquely, otherwise they'll just overwrite each other. This time I believe it's writing using millis... I'll not use this, millis... I presume this is just the time, milliseconds, so we will possibly get quite different file names, however... If you're trying to make a time-lapse image from these, then they'll all be jumbled up, so I think the movie wouldn't look terrifically good. Let's see if this code works. So this time we do have less errors, so it's plainly getting better at writing code. The problem here, again, I can't really read this file open. What's wrong with that? Okay, need to declare a file. So I was trying to work out how to fix this code and came to the conclusion that the code is just garbage. Strangely, somebody once said that my own code was garbage. If you do want some ESP32 CAM time-lapse code, then there's a link to mine in the description below. So do we fear for our jobs? AI has a lot of potential. However, geopolitical analyst Peter Zihan claims that AI won't take over the world for a long time, if at all. Current demographics mean Silicon Valley will be starved of capital over the coming decades. There is also going to be a shortage of the 20 and 30 year olds who need to write the code to make it happen. As you can see from my experiment here, we're not yet at the point where AI will be able to write the code for a basic Internet of Things device, let alone a complex AI driven application. Thanks for watching.